Here, I'm going to show you how to make it so much easier and more intuitive to go through the data in your workbook, where you can click a button and have the data change and update. You can have it where you have the same layout and you click a button and the data is going to change, but also where you have completely different data, completely different elements within your workbook. And the beautiful thing about all of this is no VBA, no code, no programming required. We are going to combine a few simple tricks to make it easier and more visual to go through your workbook and all of the data in it. Now, if you do want to make your life so much easier in Excel and go beyond what I show you here in this tutorial, if you want to automate your tasks, things like importing data, slicing and dicing and exporting it, having it automatically emailed to your coworkers, and so much more, then check out my full VBA course that'll show you how to do so much more in Excel and all with the click of a button. And I've got a link to it below this video. It might even be on sale, so go ahead and check it out. Now here, let me peel back the layers and show you what I've got here in this workbook and how to combine a few tricks to get what you see here. And here we go. Now it's starting to look a lot more like a regular worksheet. <laughs> and that is the trick behind everything. So even though it looked like when we clicked these buttons, all we were doing was changing and updating the data, something dynamic, something with programming, what we were actually doing is going to one of these different worksheets down here. And that's the biggest trick, the biggest thing that you need to understand. A lot of workbooks or a lot of dashboard type setups like this, they will have sort of a never ending scroll feature with everything on it. But you don't have to do it like that. Here you can break it up into separate tabs like this. Each little chunk of information that is important for you, that you want to have a closer look at, put it into its own little worksheet, and then we're going to give it a button up here. Then we're going to link that button with a location in the other worksheet. Give the button a descriptive name, and there you go. There is the magic. And don't worry, I'm going to show you how to do all that in just a moment. But the concept is the most important part because you have to figure out how do you want to break up your data. It's very easy here. We have a dashboard, four quarters. But you could have all sorts of different types of data in different sections. Maybe you want one little area just for charts. Well, you could have a charts button up here and then that could go to a charts worksheet that you create over here and make it look however you want it to look. And if you make it where the layout is exactly the same on every single worksheet, and you also maintain the zoom. So we're at 120. If I go back and I cycle through the worksheets, then when you click the buttons, it won't look like you've gone to another worksheet. It'll look like the data has been updated. The data has been changed. And that is a really nice way to do it, especially when you combine it with making one of the buttons darker up here. So it's a little bit easier to see which section you are in. Now that we've covered the concept, let's make one. And we're going to start here and I'll show you what we've got. This is a regular setup with a table, slicer, and chart, and some formulas right here. I showed you how to make it in another tutorial, and I'll put a link to it below this video. But once you've got this set up exactly how you want it to be set up, and if you're going to have it so it works for multiple sheets like this, make sure it's all done before you go to the next step. And then the next step, I'm going to zoom in a bit more, is to create your buttons. And all you do for that is insert illustrations, shapes, let's go for a rounded rectangle, and we click and draw our shape. And we can type dashboard, go to home, center, center, and then we've got our dashboard button, and we can do the same for Q1 to Q4. We make one, we size it how we want, we can type Q1 in there, home, center, center, and then once you've made sure that you have it how you want it to be, then we copy this guy. So control C, one, two, three, for control V. Then we can go to shape format, align, snap to shape, and it'll make it much easier for us to line these guys up. So I'll just use this as an example up here. Get one of them how you want it to be, and then you can snap it to shape like this, it's not the same height. We can click it, and there we go. And we've got our buttons nice and neat and the correct size. Now, once you've done that, once you've got it exactly how you want it to be, dashboard, Q1234, whatever buttons you want, 
Then right click the worksheet tab, go to move or copy. It's off the screen right now. Click create a copy. Let's put it before Q2. Hit OK. And now we have an exact copy of the sheet that we just made, which will have your buttons in the correct size and the correct order and the correct text. And since we just want to mirror Q1 to Q4, it's perfect. All we have to do now is to go down here and to change the data right here, and it's going to update everywhere else. So the chart and the slicer and the formulas right here. And if you made a mistake, what you can do is click this and then click the other one, the one from which you copied this, hold control and click that. And let's say that we want to make column D much bigger. We can do that. It changed it here, but it also changed it over here. So when you're dealing with a lot of similar worksheets, that's a little tip to make your life a lot easier. Now let's go to this guy a little bit cleaner and finish this up. So we have it looking how we want it to look, except for if we're on Q2, we want Q2 to be a little bit darker. So we can right click that guy. And if you click on the outside, then you can go to fill and just choose a darker color, whatever color you want so that it looks like it's been selected. Or if you didn't right click in the right place, once you've selected that guy, you'll get a shape format tab up here and you can go to shape fill and do the same thing right here. But now it's time for the link. So we are on Q2. Let's make these buttons work. Let's go first to Q1. So we're going to right click. Let me remove the link first so we can start from scratch. So I'm going to go remove a link, then right click and click a link, click place in this document. So this is going to show you the worksheets for this workbook and any defined names. And since we click the button Q1, we want to go to the sales Q1 worksheet and then go up here and choose the cell that you'd like to be selected. Now by default, it's going to be A1, which is up here and it doesn't look too good. So I'm going to choose a cell down here, A12 inside of our data set. So A1 becomes A12. I hit OK, click away, click Q1, and there we go. And you just repeat that for every single button that you have up here. And yes, that is a tedious task. It takes some time. You want to go slow and make sure that you do it right. But it makes it so that you get to do this. You have this great button interface up here that will send you all over your workbook. And now the next thing is to make it so it actually looks a little bit better than it does right now. So first of all, get your zooms on the same level. So we are, let's go for 120. How about that? Man, let's go here. 160, we'll go down to 120. And just do that for every single worksheet. Then after you've done that, you can go to the view tab over here, remove the formula bar, the headings and the grid lines. I'm going to go ahead and remove these buttons as well. And now you've already got it looking pretty nice, but we want to remove these tabs down here. So we can go to file options, advanced, and scroll down here to display options for this workbook. Uncheck show sheet tabs. You can also remove the vertical and horizontal scroll bars if you want. Sometimes that can be very nice. We're going to leave them in for now. Hit OK. And there you go. Q1, 2. OK. So we also need to remove the headings for all these other worksheets. And it's a bit tedious if I do that right now. Headings and grid lines. It takes some time. But once you do it, you have that nice interface that I showed you at the very beginning. Now, the other question is, can I go to those other worksheets that you added before you remove the tabs down here? And the answer is yes. So this doesn't stop you from being able to navigate through your workbook using control page up and page down. So I can still go through the workbook and get to this empty sheet here at the end. And unless I hide this worksheet, there's no way to prevent that from happening. So you can hide a worksheet tab by right clicking it and clicking hide, or you can use VBA and macros to do all sorts of really interesting things. And in my full course, I show you how to make it so you can click a button and then you have to input a password before certain worksheets are visible. So those are administrative worksheets that have really important things that the user doesn't always need to see. Click a button, enter the correct password, then you can see them. Otherwise you can't, you can't navigate to them like this. You can't right click and unhide them. You can't go to the VBA window and view them from there. You have to enter the correct password for that. 
And that's really why I say you can do so much more with VBA and macros because it's true. You can add a level of power to your worksheets that you just can't without it. But here, now, you know how to, without any programming or VBA, add these little buttons up here and make it so that it looks like your data is just automatically being switched out for new data when you go between the quarters. And once you remove the grid lines and the headings, it just looks really, really good and it's quite seamless. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and hit the bell icon. And also, if you'd like, you can go to Teach Excel to download this workbook, as well as to view all of my courses on Excel. And there's a link in the description to my full VBA course. But for this tutorial, that's all there is. And don't forget, this here is just a background color. That's all.